Hi, Rob. Hi. Thank you for joining me today on Inside the Industry. I am really honored to have you on. You are such an icon as far as in my world, the makeup world, the industry. You've been in it for quite some time and put your hands in a lot of things. So thank you for sitting with me today. Thank you. That's very generous of you to say thank you for having me. Very truthful. It's just facts that we're speaking. You have been around for a moment and have done quite a lot. And I think for me, sometimes with uh, artists, we identify somebody as with something. And in my head, I think of two things, one wicked and two magic pads. Because when I found out you were the bad, I knew magic pads was just weird before I knew it was you, by the way, because mm -hmm. I'm pretty confident. I saw them, do they carry an Alcona or am I wrong for saying that? They oh, do. It's been selling them for years. Yeah. Yes. Because I bought them there and I was like, oh my God, I love these. I love these. And then later found out they were you. And I was like, stop. Yeah, it's fun, like, being in the same room with people when they realize that it's mine. Yeah, I can bet. I'm, I'm just like any other gay or hair or makeup person. And then, you know, sometimes people have said things like, oh, you really love those magic pads, don't you? And I'm like, well, yes. yeah, they're mine. So. <laughs> yes, well, I created them, so I stand by my product. <laughs> what, do what do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, wait, you, this is yours? That, well, and then people are like, what, what? but oh I always had this I came from a makeup retail background like before I got into theater and like all of that stuff so mm -hmm. um my background was of luxury sales and I mm -hmm. wanted nothing to ever do with that again I was like this is not a luxury product this is a cheap $20 skincare product that hopefully everybody can afford love if you don't want it I don't want you to buy it like right. I, I never pushed the sales on anybody so I was never I was never that person that was like trying to wiggle my way in so that I right. could get my product to you. Right. In fact, it was just the opposite. I was like, I waited for people to come to me and be like, what is this? And then I could say, well, this was you yeah. know, a really cool revolutionary product that I developed for myself because it works so well. Ugh. Everybody else would like it too. Well, I love that. And now I'm going to kind of tear back and forth between these two subjects because they're very much intertwined as far as product use and you being a makeup artist and working backstage. Now you've told me you worked at Wicked for 10 and a half years which I did a fun little math moment, and it is probably not accurate, it's probably ballpark, but if that's how long you've been working on Wicked, putting Alphaba through, you realize in the ballpark, you've done that makeup around 4,035 times. Um, I could, ballpark. I could have, but. <laughs> um, that's then, insane to me. I mean, ha have I sat through 4,000 Wicked shows? Yes, but. Yeah. I haven't done the makeup for all of them. I started as the makeup swing. Mm -hmm. but you know this because you work in theater, so it will make a little bit of sense to you. When I started Wicked in 2009, mm -hmm. 11 years ago, there were four U.S. companies. Broadway, mm -hmm. San Francisco Sit Down, Tour One, and Tour Two. Okay. And on those four companies, there's one makeup person. So imagine you're on tour in right. Denver, you are the only makeup person, you have two hair people behind you, and then you have two local hair people behind you. So the whole hair and makeup team is made up of five people, two of which might be local carpenters. Right. We don't know how it's going to hit or miss, and when we hit a local, yeah. <laughs> and then you've got the two hair people, but it's a different department, so they're not allowed to cross over. Yes. So when you're on tour, nobody can cover for you. And so I was the person that they would fly out to cover each of these people on the different companies and stuff like that. Wow. So you were the local swing for all of those going up. The local swing in New York and then the universal swing for all four U.S. companies of Wicked. So that must have had you working. I mean, if you look at back that time of your life, were you just boom, 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 nonstop, just all around? Yeah. You had to have been. Because yeah, I, was the I was the universal swing. Right. Say it again. I was always like that anyway. If it wasn't with it, it was something else. It was like... You were uh, used to it. 
photographers and commercials and also I mean I was always flying and traveling all over the place. Yes well for those who don't know you also were an actor and a model for a lot of your life as well so it's like you're used to I feel like this. Yes, I, know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did I did model for a long time um, yes. I really hesitate to call myself an actor because I work, oh. I, have, I work with and I have had so many friends who I who I respect as truly real actors and artists and creators. I feel you on that yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I love acting. I love acting. I love TV. I love film. I love all of it. I want to see everything that's ever made. I see it as art. I see it as beautiful art and filmmaking. Yeah. Um, I love the performances. I love the, I love how, how mm -hmm. simple or how complex a character, a character can be or portrayed and told through film and TV. Okay. So I love all of that stuff. And I love music too, so I can sing, but I, but it was kind of a, it, it was a side effect of me being an artist. I always thought like, I agree. It's like that umbrella we live under and then we find our own little area tune because I can play piano and I study music and yeah. I can, I can act a little bit maybe because I enjoy the art so much. Right. Um, but I would really hesitate to call myself an actor. I, I feel you. I feel you. Okay. We won't put it on all the little bullets we have on you. Choir um, that would require me to work. <laughs> no, I feel like that's the same way I feel about, I mean, we see people every day on Instagram and they're like, well, I'm a model. I'm a photographer. I'm because they do it in a slight scale. And I'm like, oh, I wish people would get back to the days where you had more pride and kind of like what you're saying, like you understand the like, you know, levity of what you're saying when I say that title, not just, well, I know how to take a phone on my iPhone. Like, friends that are professional actors, whether it's theater exactly. or Broadway or musical theater or TV or film or all of the above. Right. I can't sit here and call myself an actor. I'm the, I'm the hair. <laughs> you <be> damned. <laughs> like, I mean, yes, depending on where you, I, I gave a similar interview recently, and depending on where you've known me, yep. my 22 years in the New York City career, yep. yes, a different career. I started uh studying music and then i modeled for a long time and then i started doing makeup and then i got a lucky gig doing some acting which pulled me back into that world a little bit yeah. and, you know in new york it's always like where are you from what do you do where are you from what do you do and and i right. feel like i feel like we are unconsciously this breed of people that are forced to identify ourselves on a daily yep. basis like who yep. are what do you do? Right. Give me your resume. Give me your one, two, three. It's the quickest way to get to know you. And I guess maybe to feel safe or I also identify with that person and connect in that instant moment of New York kind of running into each other on the streets. It's all very homey. I mean, I could be on the subway and see five different people I know and be like, oh, Lord Jesus, do I want to have a conversation? I think I'm the makeup artist for Wicked. And I'm like, I'm not. I know. I know. There's only I, one and it's not me. That's, that's Craig's job. <laughs> I mean, there was, I feel you. I think like when I when I was promoting the pads years ago, and I was working mm -hmm. with publicist Allure Magazine, wanted to come to Wicked to see the witch get green, and then yep. see her remove the green with the magic pads. And I was like, first of all, I don't do the green. Second, yeah. I'm not really sure why you would contact me about removing the green makeup with the magic pads, considering they don't remove makeup at all. Right, <laughs> right. Like that's not what they're there for. But you do have, I mean, if we're getting back to products, I mean, you have quite an extensive line. It's not even just the magic pads. You have the, a new cleanser that's come out and you also have the Bianca Del Rio. I love the, the Bianca remover that is for removing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that a little bit because I'm obsessed. And I also love that it was based off of collab for mm -hmm. Bianca Del Rio from RuPaul, RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes. Where did that come about? How did that even get started? Well, I was working on a coconut oil makeup remover for a long time and I couldn't figure out the packaging. I was having a lot of difficulty. Mm -hmm. um, Roy and I met in, we didn't, we didn't, uh, he was doing a tour in Australia. I flew down to meet him for some of it. Mm -hmm. When the Australia leg finished, we had uh, booked a small vacation in Bali. So we were there floating around the pool and I was trying to convince him to do a line of lipsticks or makeup or something. And he was like, mm. no, nobody's going to buy makeup from me. He was like, nobody takes me what? serious. Blah, blah, blah. I know he's stupid. He doesn't have any idea how, how powerful he is. Yes. I was like, you could put out a tampon with your name on it and people- We would like, use it, sweetie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so my idea was that he should do a line of three lipsticks and call one Bianca, Adore, and Courtney. And then it would be cute. One could be red, pink, blue, whatever. Just yeah. have fun with it. People will buy it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Just put it out there and see if people like it. Yeah. And he said, no, he said, I need a coconut oil makeup remover, make me one and I'll do that. Okay. And I said, well, I already, I do have one, um, mm -hmm. but I need to figure out the packaging. 
Mm. Work on that. I sent him some prototypes and he was like, it works. And I was like, yeah, I know it works. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I was asking you. Like, I like it. And so he tried it for a little bit, a little bit longer. And I was playing, you know, playing with the ingredients just to make sure that I could safely package this stuff with as few ingredients as possible. Totally. And boom, it was done. And we launched it uh, two and a half years ago. And yeah, it's a, another product that is- Another just... product. I know, cause you started with the magic bags and I'm assuming that was your second, other than the silly pads were added um, later. And I partnered with Cheryl Lee Ralph about four, three or four summers ago. We launched them at DragCon in New York and it was like the funnest weekend. <gasps> oh my God. With Cheryl Lee Ralph in a convention center full of gays from all walks of life. Listen. Oh my lord I, was, I don't know if i will ever not be here again i was this gonna say the happiest place on earth oh my god and those were a hit too and those are the one things i have not tried so i have not gotten to play with those because i also know i'm usually more of a thank you i mean at first i was like i don't know i don't know that people want these and then i started playing with them as a makeup artist and i was like oh these do anything these love do anything and they're completely indestructible Totally. They're so cheap. You can spend a few dollars on a makeup sponge and you'll have it for the rest of your life. Those are not going anywhere. And that's the thing that I love is that all your stuff is also cruelty-free, vegan, organic. And so I love the reusableness of it. And like the reason I really love the idea with the Silly Pad so much is because you don't waste your makeup also. Right. It doesn't absorb into it. No, I'm not going to badmouth any other beauty company because everybody's got good stuff. But the sponges, come on. I know are not meant to apply your your whole foundation to your whole face they're meant for Ooh, like you don't like the beauty blender moments i love the beauty blender but it's not to apply that's fair I, mean, I do i do come down later on it especially if i have an oil based you know what i mean you're supposed to be diluting your foundation and your yes. and kind of buffing it into the skin while removing extra with the beauty blender that's what yes. that's for agreed but people that i see <laughs> that like pump foundation on your hand and then dip and they scoop it their face with the beauty blender i'm like that's an, what do you do? And it's a and it's a big waste of their product, unfortunately, as well. Their foundation All half of it is gone. In the sponge. Done. I know. I hear you. Oh Lord, amazing. have mercy. You'll get the perfect amount on your face. Yeah. Then, like eighty. I could have a whole other face worth of product in that sponge. And it's never coming out. No, no. <laughs> and it's it is hard to get out as well. I will give you that. There are certain cleansers I've used. Yeah. I it's use Dawn dish soap to even just like. It's gone. Please it. I'm like, come on, let's do this. <laughs> now tell me, because you were saying, okay, you're not the main for Alphaba, but you have done her makeup. As far as running, have you ever swinged in for Craig's track and then have had to maintain? A million times. Yeah, yeah. A million times. So I kind of want to talk a little bit of itty bitty about her with it being Halloween season. She's like our main witch. I feel like if anybody thinks of a witch, boom, at least me being in the theater world, that's exactly what I think of. It's like green just the wickedness of it. And I love how classic it is. I love what Joe DeLude did with this like design. I love, I've seen him do it in just different um, seminars or other things and having assisted him a few times here and there. He, his application, his process of it is really beautiful. So I know having you been in there with there being so many different alphabas that come in and out, does it change along the years or does the process, it's a blueprint for what it is and there's minor adjustments. No, it's a blueprint. Nothing changes. It's, 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 it's just, you wear this face, you're alpha, but we got to have it just like that. Yep. Now, here's the thing. The green makeup. Yep. Not change. No, I would assume not. The way that it's applied, the shade, um, it needs to be a specific shade. It can't be too dark. It can't be too light. It can't be too sheer. Yep. Um, you know, so the green itself is what it is and it needs to stay the same for a specific reason you know it matches the lighting it's a design i would say lighting caution right 100 percent. the costumes the bodysuit the you know everything right. is, it pieces together because of the green so the green is the one thing that has to be specific mm -hmm. but the green for those of us who work there is the easiest part of the job like oh, we I can in our sleep that's no yes. problem every girl is different though because if you want when you wash her out with that green makeup it's like putting a heavy layer of white foundation on a, a non-white person. That part. Now That's all it. my features are subdued, if you will. It's like, I got to bring it all back. You have no cheeks, no lips, no nose, yeah. no eyes, no eyelashes. You've got nothing. You're just right. you look like a, a baby toad that was just like... <laughs> okay. 
And so then we draw the features back on. Now with that comes a little bit of an artistic interpretation and in how mm -hmm. we do it. Act one, she's meant to look like she doesn't have any makeup on. Act two, yes. she looks like she took a break at Sephora and some gay hooked her up and gave her a smoky eye and some, and some nice lashes. But in <laughs> fairness, I don't think you can see most of that from the house. No, you unfortunately, I mean, I've seen it and there's many a moments where I catch depending on where I'm sitting because I've seen the it. The thing people ever say is because there's the line at the opening at the top of the second act, the green just get greener. So people say, does she just get greener or does the makeup change too? And we're like, well, actually she doesn't get greener. It just says that. And yes. Just the line. <laughs> yeah, just the line. <laughs> All the little tricks that we know behind stage and then it's just you know for show for smoke and mirrors there so yeah i so love here it, the um the broadway mm -hmm. position has always belonged to craig but yep. in the beginning i was his cover for the longest time and then even throughout the years when he would take a leave of absence to go on tour or mm -hmm. something like that then they would move me into the supervisor position and then totally you know, position with somebody else so I mean, I just, I went all over the place. Yep. And just, like I said to you in the text, to me, it was a job. So like I right. I have had so many jobs uh, in, in my several different careers that mm -hmm. in terms of a job and having a job, it's probably the best job I'm ever going to have. Yeah. Um, but to, it's still a job. Like I show up every day and I'm the swing. I don't know which track I'm going to do sometimes. And sometimes I think I know which track I'm going to do. And then I show up, it's a completely different one. Doesn't yeah, that's the thing. I mean, like every house is run differently too. Because I know for me, I'll know beforehand. I mean, swinging on Lion King a bunch and uh, Book of Mormon. That one always scares me because I'm like, oh, that's my hair stuff. I am not. I don't know about you. I don't know where your hair skills lie versus the makeup. But I would say mm -hmm. makeup, hair. Well, I'm a hairstylist. I started at Wicked as the makeup person, but a year later I started working in wigs. So that I've been- So you have both in you. 10 years nonstop, I've been working as a hairstylist. I'm going back to Pose on Monday full time. I'm a hairstylist. Okay, that's good. Well, for me, no, no. And I know, I mean, as far as you coming in and swinging, as far as Wicked, I didn't even realize, are you able to do both? You get to do switch through the makeup track and the hair track. That's kind of nice that you have like that moment. Whereas I know other houses, if they have a definitive line of makeup track, hair track, I definitely don't swap over. Um, yeah, I'm the only one that ever has because I'm the only one that can ever do both. <gasps> Fair enough. Fair enough. I love that. They and do, now there's... No, they do not expect any hair people to know anything about the makeup department. And the makeup person is not expected to know anything about the hair department. They're too... And I agree. Because I was like, that's a handful of, oh, I should know how to do a wicked makeup and then a hairstyle. That for me is a whole game. Created by the union for that purpose. Craig Jessup couldn't do a pin curl set if, he, if his life depended on it. <laughs> And I feel him on that. <laughs> and he will be thrilled that I said that. He will be, <laughs> don't you dare ask me to come do a pin curl. I, I felt the same way. I've only had to. I mean, I know a lot of people that are trying to maybe get into swinging or working on Broadway in general. It's something you kind of have to acquire is working hair. Because first and foremost, and wigs. I mean, you have to style, apply, learn how to quick change, prep, all of that. Because it is not an easy business to get into. If you're just coming at it from a makeup standpoint, it's very few and far between gigs and positions even open to not only swing, but take on full time, like that's just not too much. So it's something I feel like you have to acquire, to be honest, in theater, both. Well, I don't know if you have to, but in my opinion, if you can, it would be wise to do Beneficial, yeah. At least more doors, more doors open, all of that. But the less, I mean, this, I learned this lesson in 2008 when the economy crashed because of the housing market. This was yep. 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I've already been through this once before. And right, what a little. Years ago when the budgets were taken away from the advertising was there was only enough budget for one hair and makeup person to be on set. So if you wanted the job, you were going to do you better hair. buckle up and do both. Right. An agent at the, at the time that would sometimes push back and say, I don't know. They need a real hairstylist for this one. I don't know. They specifically asked for a hairstylist. And I was like, I'm a hairstylist. Put me on the job. I cannot. But sometimes, like, you know, you it's business. Like, it's business. I'm not going to get the job if somebody doesn't think that I'm a hairstylist. Let me show up on set and, sh and right. then decide. Like, don't right. tell me what I can do after I, after or before I've tried doing it.
I love that. And I think that's even a better mindset to move forward with, I mean, with this COVID hour and getting back into the work swing. And I'm happy, like you're saying, you're getting back to regular business as usual come Monday, which is fantastic. There's a lot of productions that are coming up and getting back into the like, rolling. Obviously, probably a little bit of new news on, on set and how you guys adapt and just a little different flow of how it goes down, but still it's getting back at it. Do you feel like there's anything you've had to do personally to get ready to get back on set? Any adjustments you've had to personally make? No. Not even kit wise, nothing? I don't have my kit. My kit's been locked in a studio, a TV studio for the last month. I had to go to Walgreens to buy a comb and a brush. I had nothing. Stop. I walked off set. I was sent home for two weeks. <gasps> my and heart. My phone for six and a half months has been locked in the TV studio in the Bronx. And I've been oh my God, so you have not touched. You've not done. I had a haircut. <laughs> they sent me home. Why are they doing you like this? I don't even care. It looks fabulous. I can't even be mad at it. Stop. You can be shaggy care. chic and I'm just not even gonna. I don't care. <laughs> I've been in hiding. I've been at my little house in Miami floating around my pool with my yes. broken leg while she's been healing that. Oh, girl. Okay. I've been off Instagram. I've been off Facebook. I don't know what's happening in the world. Oh my God. I'm like taking you out of your little shell in and of this moment. I'm obsessed. Now tell me, cause even like you'd said when it, and this is something I really admire about you. And I think if people, like you've said, know you and just how you can even read your energy, you are very down to earth. You are very real. I think you keep it very real. And the one thing I like is working in a very, Working in vanities, even though I hate it when people describe it like that, vanities, it can be very materialistic. But I think you're very grounded in the sense of even working in it, you find ways to give back to the community and be a realistic, very adaptable with the times. And you're always one for the people in the sense, or the artists rather. So I love that getting back to your line with the magic pads, when you came out with this new cleanser recently, you're making it, and I know some people have obviously, of course, seen it, whether it be on your Instagram or your own promotion, but it's something that you came out with. It's a new ad to your line, but you also are doing it for free, which I think is something really, almost a major tip for other people in business to take from you. I know not everybody will probably be willing to do that, but the way that you're moving it fit is really sincere to me. Because I was like, of course. And when I read your reasoning behind it, and I want you to give us a little bit of tea on that, but I was like, wow, what a guy for that move. It was such a like good guy move. And I want you to kind of give us a little insight to that about where it came about, why bringing out the cleanser now and why free, why drop it during a pandemic where people are lower on money, having no jobs, we're at a standstill. Why now? Um, it was a hard call to make. Yeah. And I, I very much appreciate you and the kind things that you're saying about me. So thank No, I mean, yeah, hundred um, percent. I forget sometimes that, you know, I'm, I'm so focused on like what it, what it is that I am in control of right. that, that I can uh, hope for a possible outcome. You know, like I'm so focused on like, what is it that I can do right. in this moment that I don't stop to think about like the secondary perception. Mm -hmm. um, I've done so many fundraisers and and special events and I've done so much charity and production and all sorts of just goodwill things in my life. And what feels the best out of doing all of those things is not having done something kind, but when other people say, what you did inspired me. A because thousand. I do stuff like that too. Yeah. And that, that I think is the greatest reward is to inspire other people to do what they can to be kind. Mm -hmm. And it's a simple act of kindness. And in terms of business, um, the beginning of this pandemic was very scary for me. Oh, yeah. It was very scary. I was not financially prepared for this. I was very rich. I was shopping in foreign countries at stores that I, that I, you know, that I only dreamed of shopping in. And then three weeks later, I was sent home indefinitely for good yeah, like, so stability. And so, the beginning of this was very scary. But simultaneously, I've been working really hard on this face wash for like five years. I finally yeah. got the face wash done. The packaging, the labels, the branding, everything is done. Everything is done except the website hasn't been updated and it hasn't been photographed, but it's ready to sell. The, the warehouse is full and I didn't know what to do with it. Well, I was like, of course I'm not launching this now because I can't ask people to spend more money in a pandemic. Everybody's terrified. I'm terrified. I, I wouldn't be buying a $20 skincare product. Well, no, I would. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I only use one. Like I, I use the face wash in the shower and then I use the magic pads. Nothing else touches my face. So yeah. if I only use one skincare product, I'm going to spend $20 a month on it. But anyway, yeah. um, so as I stepped back and yeah. I watched how this unrolled, I realized without hesitation, people continued to purchase the pads during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I thought, huh, this is the staple product that I that I anticipated it might be one day. Yes. People are, are continuing to buy this product. Yes, they need it, yes. Uh, the worst global pandemic and financial crisis that this country has seen in decades. Yeah. So then I forced myself to go back to the origin of the, of the magic pads. Why did I create this company? Did I want to be rich? No. Did I want to make a name for myself? No. Do I want to be famous? No. Do I want to be a brand owner, ambassador? No. <laughs> like, right, I check it all off. I mean, I'm here for it. everybody wants money, but like, that I wasn't like, oh, this will make me rich. Right. I, I thought, I can't believe that I've had access to skincare products my whole life working in the beauty industry. Yeah. And it took me until the age of 30 to find something that worked. See, I got so, lucky, but I had to go through a whole different journey just because I had crazy breakouts. So I had to do it early because I was getting sick and tired, but adult acne that just wouldn't go away and when yeah. I found something that worked for me because of the type of person I am I was like I have to tell everyone about this so I started yes. the bulk and then you know long story short I made my own and luckily the company has done quite well but yeah my inspiration for giving it away was that I felt I refused to ask people to spend more money during this pandemic that but part. what I thought was, if people are already buying the pads, mm -hmm. least they're already my customers, they're already my loyalists, right. they're already, they already love the product and they're going to buy it no matter what. Yes. Let me thank them. Right. By giving them something that they can use, which is a face wash at no cost to you. You like the products, you like the ingredients, great. Here's another product with the same ingredients. You can just add it to the thing. It's free, it's not gonna cost you anything else. And guess what? Maybe you'll like it so much that when they go for sale, you'll start buying that too. And that'll be your new favorite face cleanser. I don't know, but this, but it was in the beginning too. And I was like, you know, the Broadway community has always been so supportive of me. Oh, so I hear you, yep, same. For free, and then I'll give a dollar from every sale to BCEFA. And you know, I don't think I can save the world. I can't save the world. I don't have money like that. I don't have income like that. All things, they add up. I don't sell billions of jars of pads a year. I'm, I'm good, but um, I'm not Neutrogena, right? So, <laughs> right, stop. So yeah, I thought, well, I'll, I'll make some money and I'll thank the Broadway community by, yes. by giving back to BCFA. Which is phenomenal for those that don't know, that's Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS. So for, mm -hmm. I mean, especially yeah. with it being, say it again. Kind of these, and yeah. the Actors Fund. So they're kind of these two. And the Actors Fund, right? They're like sister, yeah. totally. Which is fantastic because with, I mean, my God, you think about the season, the red bucket season that we have during the shows. And now that everything is on a complete shutdown since March, we haven't been able to, though the Broadway community is great like that. And I commend you for being one of them as well to then step up and find your own way to continue to contribute to these aids, which is fantastic because the mass amounts of money that get donated during these shows from live audiences for the tip donations and everything. It is monumental and it makes huge change within each of our years of the Broadway community and that has not happened. So that we have found other ways and I know I've seen other, you know, uh, networks and people within the community still raising money and funds for it because they're not trying to have a whole year go by and not, which is great, but it, it just goes to show so much more about you and your character and where your moral backing is and you're still willing, hey, I'm not making the money, but I'm still going to find a way to give. It's incredible. To me, it was very, very inspiring. And I was one of those people, like you said, I was like, wow. It comes from this train of thought of like, of what can I do? Yes. We're so, we are so accustomed to acknowledging our limitations, right? And what we can't oh. do. Well, I can't do anything about that. Well, I can't do anything about that. Or that's too much for me to deal with right now. Like, what can I do? And I logically had to think about what can I do Switch it. With, with this? And I thought, I'll, I probably I'll pay somebody's rent. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? That's not going to save somebody's life, but that is going but. to make somebody's 
somebody's life so much better for one month. Exactly. One person. And I'm just right. like one person with one tiny little skincare company. Right. You know, I'm not Neutrogena, but if everybody thought this way, that was just going to say mindset. If we all moved in that way, everybody who was floating right now mm -hmm. just grabbed onto one other person and shared your life supporter, right? Preserver, this world would be a totally different place. I, just, I couldn't agree more. I live with so much privilege and mm -hmm. It's not lost on me that I worked for it. It's not lost on me that I'm lucky for it. It's not lost on me that I'm, you know, that I'm privileged. But, mm -hmm. but there is so much privilege. Yeah. No, I know. That mm -hmm. for me not to help people, I think, makes me an asshole. Right. Like, what am I going to do with these tools that I've just naturally had? And because a, a bajillion of things we could list, but how am I going to use it for good? I always say that. How am I going to use this privilege that has been bestowed upon me? All the Instagram put... followers in the world. But if, you, if you're not sharing your voice for, you know, equality and love and, and diversity and fairness and freedom, then what is the point in having followers? Right. Zero. Because you have nothing, you're not really giving much. Uh, Part why I've been off social media all summer is because the whole Black Lives Matter movement exploded. Yep. And in my opinion, that's the only thing that matters right now. We have COVID, we have an election, Agreed. and we have the Black Lives Matter um, Couldn't agree more. movement. Yeah. It's a movement that we are all in. And if you're not on this movement, I don't want anything to do with you. Agreed. You're in it on any better. We don't exist. Right. And so, to me, social media has become irrelevant right now. Yeah. It doesn't nobody cares how pretty you are right now. Nobody cares how thin you are. Nobody cares where you're traveling to. Nobody cares what first class airline you're on. It doesn't matter how fancy your dog is or your new shoes or your new dress. Because bitch, people be dying every day. Every day. COVID and you know the black community is being shot in masses, and there's like white supremacy all over the place, and oh, like God, that's this a shit doesn't matter. Right. The shit doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't need to hear everybody's thoughts on social media. I don't follow any Republicans or Trump supporters, so I don't have any weird like. Better off on that. Yeah, I was gonna say nice. But I am also smart enough to have drawn the line four years ago. Like, really? I'm going to be forty years old in two months. Four mm -hmm. years ago, we had this conversation. I said I'm not negotiating with this. If you are a Trump supporter, you are not in my life. Right. And so, if you somehow snuck through and you wonder why I'm still uber liberal or something it's a, oh no, no yeah no. it's a whole mess which it's like so funny too i mean just intertwining you back it's like how could you it always astonishes me when i do see people um to each their own but like i said i'm very much like you where it's like there's no negotiation there's no room for me to debate with you anymore if you're supporting him after seeing four years even a year of what he's put out and what he projects and especially after this last debate in these last couple months of what has happened in this country and to the christians and the catholics and the generation that tried to raise me right. if you didn't learn this in 1969 you are not going to learn it in 2020 and unfortunately I yeah no talking about this agreed agreed well, Lord have mercy. Well, I love that you're still, I mean, heavily, I know going forward, you are telling me Broadway, but also, I mean, we're on, a, we're on a still. You're getting back to work in the TV and film world. Do you ever see any more Broadway moments? Yeah, thank you, amen. Because oh, no. work is it. Um, or is it TV and film more of a vibe? Because I feel like also when you were swinging on Broadway and had your, you know, here and there full-time gigs and partial for Broadway, you still were also working TV and film. I guess the better question is, how did you balance that? TV and film full-time when I was doing full-time on Broadway. How did I balance it? I don't know. Nobody knows how I did it. I would, show up, I would show up to every job and people would be like, how are you doing? How are you awake? I, every year my accountant looks at my income statements and she goes, how do you have time to do all these jobs? But oh I, don't know. I think I grew up poor in Michigan and... Mm -hmm. You know, I was of that gener. I was here. Tw I've been here 22 years. So, yeah. 1999. This was before reality TV, cell phones, the yep. internet. You know, Facebook, social media, all of that stuff. Reality TV didn't exist back then. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I think I know too well what it is to be financially insecure, yeah. and I am lucky to, that I'm a person who's willing enough to put in the work. Do you feel like it also then adds to you never getting too comfortable somewhere? 
meaning that you don't ever settle, you don't ever go. Cause I mean, for many of people that I know that have worked and gone through the Wicked House, whether that be even with wardrobe or an actor's position, a lot of people refer to it as they do Lion King, that it's like a government job, if you will. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. Again, let's sans pandemic, cause we didn't anticipate this, but that's still on a hiatus before it does come back full throttle, we have no doubt. But did you ever get comfortable in saying, you know what, I, I could just sit back and just do Wicked and I could be fine. I could just make X amount of money. Did you ever just wasn't enough for you? That was going to be like, no, I have to creatively fuel and do more and like having your hands in different pockets. You know, it, it wasn't about Wicked not being enough. It was that I was already always doing so many things when I joined Wicked. Yes. It wasn't like I was doing Wicked and then I added other things to my repertoire. It was that yes. I was Wicked to my repertoire while I was doing other things. And so I never stopped doing multiple things at the same time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I could have kicked it and just had a government job, but it's boring. I mean, no. I just do the same show every day. and That's how I feel. I love the job and what it offers. The people I got to work with are just, that was the best part of it. They're my family. I mean, the best. Everything about me. We come in every day. All of us know every single mood that happened throughout our whole day. Yeah. That's the cool part. But the job itself is just like the same show every day. Yeah, yeah. Inside it, it doesn't feel special and exciting. Right. Especially after a year. I mean, I could understand. It does. You know, there are cool, magical moments, like the first day that Brittany Johnson made her Glinda debut and Broadway right. had her first Black Glinda. Huge. There are moments like that that made it, like, that was one of my proudest moments of ever being yeah. in Broadway. Yeah, yeah. Where it's and like, it, it has that brand newness about it. Just because of the symbology of it, but because of the energy and the love that was felt behind the moment when she was first revealed. Right. Um, but those moments are few and far between. I mean, you don't get magic like that every day. No, not every day. It's really special. It's. I remember seeing it. I was watching it on a different, I didn't get to go see the show live, but I remember watching the whole back, you know, stage of it and after her coming out. And I was like, this is huge, long overdue, but huge. Like it was just such a phenomenal moment. And you were like, you're saying you were physically backstage for it, but you don't deal with, I know Glinda, and as well as Madame Marble, they just have plots. As far as people that understand theater, plots, they just are given what they're told. You might help them with the makeup, but then they do it essentially themselves every night. Yeah, everybody does the makeup themselves, um, except for the Green Witch, and then the two quick changes that come in the second act for two of the boy characters, which you okay. know about, but we're not allowed to say. Yeah, we love it. I love it. Very, very cool. I love that. People don't realize how many people in Lion King when I work it, they have no idea that we're actually physically doing, at least on tour, I can't speak for Broadway because it might be different, but all even the little gazelles, the zebras that you see, everything, all the stamps we are doing. So it's all like, we're working. We're not just putting them through because I mean, it's not like graffiti changes or. And we don't because it's all about the green witch, but on right. top of the green witch, you have eight monkeys. Yeah. Dr. Dilliman's mask. Mm -hmm. You have another surprise mask. Yeah. Some surprise prosthetics. Mm -hmm. And all of these things need to be placed in the dark, in the right spot for the right time of the show, at different points in the show, at different points in the building. So yes. it's very, it's a You very, are running around. <laughs> it is a lot of, I mean, I can't even say running because it is timed so that you could walk. Right. It's still a machine, if you will. Yeah. But yeah, when I learned that track, that was the hardest thing I'd ever done in my life. I went home. I remember I still smoked cigarettes at the time. It was like 2009. Yes. <laughs> I'd go home and just sit in front of my TV around the corner from the theater and be like, <laughs> am I ever going to get this? I was like, I cannot believe I just did that. Yes. It wasn't, it, it wasn't like, oh my God, it's wicked. Oh my God, it's like right. blockbuster musical. It was yeah. like, my brain. Like, no, I know. Like, oh my God. Like, I didn't, I like, know. I didn't know people did this. <laughs> no, and all the time. And the craziest thing, I don't know if you're similar like me, I'm sure over the years it's acquired, but I'm like, I, it takes me a very long time to let go of my track notes and to feel comfortable just completely letting it be muscle memory. That might be a solid, no, no kidding, like three or four months, depending how much I'm either swinging or on it. If it's full time, maybe a little bit sooner. But I'm, it takes me a minute to really just not even have, want the fallback of even little like, uh, you know, post-it side notes, little like hand cards that I'll still have on my apron or whatever I'm working with just to 
just to double check and make sure, okay, I, I'm doing that right. Cause I, all my life I will second guess it, no matter how many times I've done it. I'll tell you what, I haven't done, I did like an emergency stint at Chicago a couple nights and mm -hmm. then another emergency stint at Janis Joplin. Okay, work. Too, but like I've never done anything except for Wicked. Right. I'll tell you what, I, I don't believe that there is a hair or makeup track on Broadway more involved Mm. tailed and harder than the makeup track for Wicked. I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past it to be very honest. And I haven't done it. I just heard. So I just can't even imagine. And I do all five of those tracks in my sleep. I could run all five of those tracks with my eyes closed on no notes for the last 10 years. Well, excuse me with my notes. <laughs> well, and when something goes wrong, I mean, it's funny because when something really goes wrong. Yeah everyone looks to me because oh the, see because i'm the only one that knows exactly what everyone is doing in the, in the entire building at that very given moment because everybody has one track you have something special everybody something somebody else's track except for me i'm the one that covers everyone and so yeah one time we had a hair person that didn't show up one time ever i don't even know if i'm allowed to talk about this but it doesn't matter i'm sure it will be fine, one time ever, were fine. We, didn't, we we were down a hair person the yeah. swing didn't show up Yep. And the show was about to start and we were, and the supervisor was like, okay, here we go. We're going to have to do it on three people. And it had never been done before. And it was interesting because there's, I'm, there's a, the only person that knows where everybody is, is the one that covers them. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the show begins, dun, 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 and all five of us leave the hair and makeup room and we all go in different directions in the building. Right, right. So nobody knows where everybody all, no, people might vaguely have an idea where you are, but nobody knows exactly what they're doing because they don't know your track. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when something really, really went wrong in the theater, I think they were super grateful to have, to have me. Um, oh, hell yeah, so, I would be. I'd be like, you need to be on my team. Thank you. I don't do, um, I like very, very detailed notes. Mm. So I'm, I'm one of those people that needs all of the information in advance. I need yeah. you to give it to me in advance. I need to be able to look at it mm. without anybody talking to me. I need to be able to take it in and then I need to yes. apply that information to the physical. And cool. then once I have done that. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to on set, when you're on a TV show or a movie, does any of that kind of routineness or kind of getting it in your soul, do you need any sort of that routine? on those sets or is it a completely different world for you? Because it's not like you have to be at a certain time and a place. It's very different, obviously, backstage versus on set. Well, on set, it's different every day. So um, the call times are different. The locations are different. Sometimes you might be getting ready in the trailer. Sometimes you might be getting ready in the studio. It just depends on what you're doing for the day. So every day on TV and film is new. Yep. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason to anything except for your 18 minute setup time. Our union gives us a yeah. gift. 18 minutes to set up yeah so your call time is 4 42 a.m mm -hmm. you come in you drop your purse you've got 18 minutes to get a cup of coffee so that's yes. the only part like turn on your hot tools mm -hmm. make sure your breath doesn't stink do what you need to do because <laughs> 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 we're going in for the long haul you yes that for 14 yes. hours so. and it's so interesting that you say that because for you to even not that you say that because that's just facts but you wish your routine because for me on Broadway, I'm like that, where I'm like, oh my God, I need a lot of practice. I need to be re-reminded. I need a da-da-da. And when I'm on set, the openness of it, like you're saying, there's really only this sliver of consistency to every set, every day of what I am guaranteed. But then the rest is a free-for-all. I don't know when I'm going home. I don't know what maybe be asked of me. I might be on the fly told, oh, quickly go do this actor. Things could kind of happen, you know, last minute. And that with me and how I function, ah, can I do it? Yes. Will I rise to the occasion? Correct. But does it help my anxiety? Definitely not. Definitely not. I don't know why, but this has served my career in this particular state very well. I thrive under stress. The I gotta more, learn. The more stressed out and discombobulated everybody else becomes, I think it's that kind of turns me hyper-focused. Um, so you're a nurturer. So it benefits the team. I'm not a nurturer. I'm really? A, I feel like you see people in distress and you're like, I got this. Um, yeah, but I'm not a nurturer. Like I, I'm a fixer. I'm a fixer. I'll fix it. Okay. I like that. Yes. I'll take it over. I'll say, I got this, go sit down. 
but I'm not, I'm not a nurturer. I'm not like, you know, sweetie. Oh, my heart. He's not going to think. It's okay. Don't worry. No, I'm more like, okay, you fucked it up. Do you know what went wrong? Okay, cool. We're not. Oh, move. Rob. I'll be like, yeah, it's fine. And then we'll move on. No, but like, it's not personal to no, me. No, I know. I know. My it's, sensitive ass has to get it together. I mean, my, I mean, if I make, if I mess something up, I will be the first to be like, oh my God, I totally messed that up. Right. I messed up. I yeah. did it and I'm sorry. And I, and I, I know what went wrong. So. Same. At least for those. When I'm mistake ridden, I'll lay it out. I have no problem saying I've messed up. I can't work with people. There's so many people in our industry that are afraid to make mistakes. I know. That they, that they won't take responsibility for doing no. things wrong. No. You know. Yeah, I remember, I remember working with this hair swing and whenever, whenever I asked her to do something or she messed something up or I'd be like, oh, you know, it actually goes this way instead. She, she would always, it was like, oh, well, the notes don't say it. Oh, well, shit, the actor told me something. It was like, oh, just no ownership. No, don't, just say, okay. Right. And then we'll never have to have this conversation again. I'm not yeah. condescending. I'm not pretentious. I'm not mean. I mean, you might say, I am mean, actually. But I'm I not like, I'm, <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm tough. I'm, I'm tough. I expect, That's good, I expect a, lot, a lot out of people because I also give everything that I have to everything that I'm working on. And so I don't like, there has to be trust within coworkers, especially in a creative environment, because it's such an, it's such a vulnerable environment anyway, that if you can't be trusted, nobody's going to want to work with you and nobody's going to want you working on them. Agreed. Agreed. Your untrustworthy hands on somebody's face or hair is not right. <laughs> ideal at and four o'clock in the morning. Right. And me is like, if I'm your boss or I'm the leader, it always starts at the top. I mean, we've seen that in so many different situations. So if I'm setting a really high standard, I want that to follow through my team. I don't need little breaks in the chain along the way. Cause then it, initially always it's going to end up coming back to me. Cause you're, you know, whether you're being in the supervisor role that day, or you're the head of the room or in the trailer, whomever head of the makeup department, you have to be the one caring, you know, whether it be that professional vibe, a calm vibe, whatever they're setting the tone for. And I feel like everyone has to go with that. And I agree. Trustworthy. I think the one thing I always have, a, uh, I don't know how to phrase that for lack of better words, uh, differentiating between trust and also friends. Cause I, you don't need to be my friend. We don't need a kiki after work, but for sure, if I'm in a professional setting with you, we are on a job, we're in the trailer together, we're backstage, we're on a team. Yep. You're going to be respected. You're going to be heard. I'm going to listen to you. Like there's no, you, all the cordialness that you would in your job, even nine to fivers and you know, business. It's, I can, you don't have to have the, you know, drinks with me after work and know all my deepest, darkest secrets, but for sure in the workplace, there has to be some sort of just conducive energy that everybody is trusted and together in that. We're all here for yes. the same time. And those are the people that work because everybody's talented. Everyone can do makeup. Everyone can do hair. Everyone's Great. got a license. Everybody went to school. Everybody's done celebrities. Everybody's done models. We've all yeah. done it before. Um, right. I had an old, old friend of mine was Kevin Aquan's assistant for many years. Her name is Bertha Kamal. She's a Cuban makeup artist. She still oh, lives her, here in New York. She still works her ass off. She's beautiful. She's mm -hmm. talented. She's just like the old school rock star makeup I, artist that everybody always wanted to be. Like yeah. she was Kevin Aquan's right hand man, Michael right. Jackson, Janet Jackson, Tina Turner. I mean, you name it. Right. She did it. And she, I remember in my younger years, she started referring me to some of her clients. Mm -hmm. And one of them called me back several times to work with her. And I remember I, remember I picked up the phone, I called Berta and I said, look, I want to apologize. I don't want you to think I stole your client. And she said, you didn't. She said, I referred her to you. And I said, I know, but she keeps using me. I just want you to know that I'm not trying to go behind your back. She said, Rob, we're all good. We're, right. uh, we're all good. Everybody knows how to do makeup. Everybody's talented. Everybody does beautiful work. It just depends on the person. So she called you back. You got a client. She's like, that doesn't, it's not, you didn't steal her from me. I she just likes you. That part about her. And I like that you mentioned, because I do kind of differentiate between my brains and being completely honest about newer age makeup artists and kind of the OGs and the people that came up in a different era, if you will. So that way, kind of the mindset and just the energy behind working in the business. I look at everybody like you're saying, I don't care if you've done this person, that person you've done. We're all working makeup artists as far as I'm concerned. You're working, you're doing it. We're all one in the same. The things that I agree with you on that set us apart would be 
uh, characteristics about yourself, moral backing personality that will keep you going the extra mile and put you in certain spaces that are, are meant for you. But when we get into competition and people guarding stuff, whether that be knowledge or clients or other things, I like her mindset. I've had the same thing happen to me where I've had people, I'll refer them to a job and then they get the, I like the knowing because I like the move that you made of like, hey, by the way, because then, you know, then we don't have to go through this whole world of misperception or assuming that you were trying to be shady under my name or take my, you know, because there are unfortunately people like that trying to move solely for themselves, whether they be under your direction or under your clientele or whatever the case may be. Yeah, but those people um, never make it to the top because they're always trying, they're always trying to step on bottom feeders, trying to get one leg up and they're never going to make it to the top because everybody can smell it from a mile away and nobody's going to call you to work with them. Like what people don't realize is that when we're sitting on a TV set and we need help the next day, we sit there and we go, who do we want to work with? Right. We don't call the best hairstylist in town. Right. Why? Because it's irrelevant. Any of us can do the job. Yep. None of us are recreating hair here. We're just styling it. Yep. We call yep. the person that we want to sit with for 14 hours the next day. I, that was one of the first things I was told. And it doesn't, it, uh, like you were saying, it doesn't mean you're our best friend. No. You're just the person that we choose for that job to sit next you're, to us for the day. The it doesn't even mean, I might not even like you all that much. But right. that just means you're easy to work with and that you're going to yeah. get the job done. And, and if it's my call, I choose you. Yes. Yes. And there are yep. a lot of, a lot of people that I know that like, I don't, I can't trust in those environments. Right. I can't. I don't know what's going to happen. Right. <laughs> Whether it be personality, attitude, the energy that day, and maybe even sometimes skill set. Sometimes I feel like people, um, I'm, I'm much greener as far as the industry goes. I've only been in the union, I would say now coming on my third to fourth year. Um, and I've been working in the business now for at least almost 10, but still very, very green compared to many artists that are out there and been around the block for 30 plus. But it's something that I, I hate to see in generations around mine or, or younger coming up is the laziness, the entitlement, the, you know, like you're saying, well, I'm good, so hire me. And it's like, do you know how so many people are incredibly good, but it just is being patient putting in that work, which I think unfortunately people aren't as willing to do anymore. You know, they want the highest paid gig the first day out the gate of makeup school. They're ready to be paid a thousand dollars in an hour. And it's like, no, it's not how it goes. You just got, you have to put in your time. Which, you have to put in your time. And if you're an artist, you want, you want to, I mean, if you're an artist and your job title includes that word, artist, hairstylist, artist, makeup artist, um, one would think that you would do that for free anyway. Like you should be painting faces on yourself and your roommates and anybody that you can get your hands on yeah. as often as possible. Because yeah. if you're an artist, that's what you do. Right, right. And that's how I became good. I just did makeup on enough people until I was good. And the same with yeah. hair. I was oh, doing hair cool. since I was like five years old. You know, I've been braiding. I've been doing cornrows since I was like eight or nine years old in Detroit. Yes. So I meet all these hairstylists that are like, oh my God, I wish I could braid like that. And it's like, well, you're you 40. So you've had, Stop. you've well, had time to learn. Time to <laughs> like nobody, nobody put a gun to your head Stop and said, stopping. don't braid. <laughs> don't you dare try it. They're like, oh, if only. <laughs> I mean, there was, there was a part of me that that wanted to post to social media and say, okay, you've had all six months off hair, New York hairstylist. I don't right. want to see any of you ever show up on set again, not being able to braid. Tell me, I was, tell af I was afraid of the backlash. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Well, I love it. And Rob, you've given us a full hour of just incredible gems, advice, wisdom, a lot of fun tricks from backstage. And I cannot thank you enough for your energy and just allowing me your time this morning. I really appreciate you having on. You're very sweet. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for coming. Hopefully we will keep up with you. I'm excited to see your work coming through, even just more so with TV and film and things to look up. Guys, follow Rob. I'm going to put his things below so you can follow him on his Instagram, his magic pads, and all of his upcoming endeavors. Rob, thank you so much again. Thank you. And if you like theater and wigs and you like to laugh, then you will have a lot of fun watching the Eliza Schlesinger sketch show on Netflix because I did all of the hair and wigs for it. And she played about 140 characters. We filmed it in October and it came out at the beginning of the pandemic. Oh, so, honey, I did not know that was you because we could have been plugged. That is one of my, I love it. Did you see it? I love her. Yes. I love it. I did, did not you, know. 
Oh, the, did you see the sketch show though? If I've seen the sketch, no, you would know. You would know. No, it's no, called no. the Eliza Schlesinger sketch show. It came out April first, oh, it and it's on, it's on Netflix. But were there? No, it's oh, a maybe. full. It's a full sketch show. It's all Eliza Schlesinger. She wrote it. She produced it. She starred in the whole thing. I transformed her into a hundred different characters. She's a stand-up comedian. Yeah. She's genius. Oh, I have, I have seen it then. I have seen it because I've seen her do in all different, but I don't know why I'm thinking where I've seen it. She has um, five stand-up one-hour specials on Netflix. She did one called Elder Millennial that you probably saw. She's hysterical. Blonde yes. girl, yeah. like, riot. Yeah, no, she's... <laughs> and I think I've either seen clips because I follow her on social media of her being like, check out my... And then yeah. having yeah. clips from it. So maybe I haven't gotten a sat and see it. See or maybe it. even on my no, social it. media, you may have seen like the trailer or something from it. True, true, true. Oh, well then guys, watch it, check it out. That's a big whole other body of work. That's a I lot mean, of, if a lot you of like, work. if you like theater and wigs and you want to see how, <laughs> and you want to see what can be done with all of these things yeah. and you know, how Saturday Night Live makes it happen and how these sketch shows are possible. I mean, we don't do behind the scenes, but, um, but for people who enjoy watching theater and makeup and hair and the transformations and stuff like that, you will get a huge kick out of the show because um, she's genius. <laughs> she is genius. And I'm excited to, guys, check out his work. He, You're always one for me to watch. I've been watching your work for a while and I just, I love everything you put out. So just yeah. keep it coming as we will. Thank you. I will. All right, my love. Well, thank you so much. We will see you guys soon. Thank you for having me. Bye,